This is a Marix 375. It's the largest of the Marix range. They're a Norwegian company and they are super practical. And in fact, I'm going to show you that practicality right now because it's just started raining. This boat's all opened up to show you, but I'm going to close it up super quick so we don't get it wet. That's the back. That's the front. It doesn't get much more practical than that, does it? Let's go and do the tour properly. We'll start back here at the back in the rain. You can just see it start pouring down just as I started filming. So out here on the bathing platform, really nice big platform. You've got things like storage wells and boarding ladder and so forth. But what I really like is this area. It's a lovely seat when it's not raining like it is at the minute. But it's also a really good deck locker. In fact, the gas tank is in there as well for the cooking. Another great feature, and I'm going to demonstrate that before we get everything wet. Check this out. I haven't actually planned this, but it's a perfect demonstration. These are the canopies. So we can just zip that round. I wish my canopies on my boat went up like this. This is brilliant. Can you hear that rain? It was sunny a few minutes ago. You couldn't get a better boat for the British climate, could you? There we go. All we need to do now is nip around the outside. This is a proper demonstration, isn't it? There we go. And these just hook on. And I have very quickly and single-handedly kept this nice man's boat dry. And that was completely open, what, a minute ago, 30 seconds ago? As the saying has it, ta -da! brilliant. Let's hook some of these on as well. These are less important because there's no upholstery on this side, but we'll put them on just because I'm such a nice guy and I don't want his boat to get wet. There we go. I just did that, apart from that last zip, one-handed whilst holding a GoPro. I don't think that you can prove how much more efficient that is. That's brilliant. As I say, there's more hooks to put on. I'm not going to worry for the moment, but we've got everything dry. There's just a few spots of rain in here and it's chucking it down. Brilliant. So this is the largest in the range, as I mentioned, and it is a deck saloon version. So what you've got is this great big area out the back. This, of course, folds up if you don't want it quite so large. There's another seat on this side or storage area. There's fenders in there. And then this is actually the deck saloon area. So there's doors that come across here. You can leave this open if you want and have this completely enclosed. It is a galley up layout. So that's up here in the saloon, very much a Scandinavian feature. They like to have all the entertaining and living area all on the one deck so everyone's together. And that works very well. There's a hob underneath here, three burner, and there's a proper oven underneath it. And then next to that, loads of drawers. All around the place, there's a sink underneath here, of course. And that one, nice little tap. And then this big seating area. So you've got a lovely entertaining space or a dining space. And in fact, you can pull these fellas out. There we go. And sit right around it. And when you finish with those, drop them away again. If you want the table so big, fold it up. Want to get underway and you want more seating facing forward than just this? No problem. Look at this. And look how the base rises up with it. So now that's at a higher level than it was. You can see where it was there. And it means you've now got seating right the way across here so people can join in the ride and, uh, and get involved. Opening windows on the side, plenty of air in, and we've already seen the opening roof. 
in its open position, but only briefly. There's a huge multifunction display in behind here, so that can be charts and depth and whatever else you want to display on there. Switch gear is all across here. We can get to it as a power thruster on this one. This is twin engines. We'll come to those, of course. And this is this forward seating area. That's very nice. Nice upholstery in this as well, this lovely blue stitching. That looks really good. Superb. And because they've put all of this up on the main deck, it means you've got masses of space further down for cabins. So if we come right down to the front, look at the size of that. That is a really big bed for a sub 40 foot boat right in the center. You've got big windows on the sides, both sides, of course. And you've also got a large hatch overhead that opens and a mirror at the end. Wardrobes in here. Actually, that's a storage locker, so the wardrobe must be on the other side. And indeed, there it is. And then little neat areas so you can drop your mobile phone or other bits and pieces and that in and you won't lose them. And more storage in places like this. Nifty, huh? Also, tons of headroom. I'm six foot two. You could be seven foot tall in here. And then further back down the boat, if we jink this way, another really big cabin and a little seat in here so that like Maggie, you can tuck yourself away. She's not got a good book, but we could probably find her one. This is storage in behind here, hanging locker, um, shelving, and uh, again, storage dotted around everywhere. And again, really big windows. We're looking out of Sultan's Marine at the minute, so not the most lubrious view out on this side. The other side would be better, of course. But look at the size of this. You could actually sleep this way or that way. It's so big, it's massive. And loads more storage, more seating. It's just a really big, spacious cabin. You wouldn't argue over who's got the best cabin. In fact, you'd probably argue who was the best cabin. And then on the other side, heads compartment. So. Toilet, of course, you've got a nice wash basin and then a shower with a separate doorway to that. So it keeps all this area dry. Very good. Here's a better view out. There we are. Sultan's Marina in the rain. I think it's actually stopped now. Never mind. We've got a good demonstration of the canopy for you. Superb. Let's go and have a look around the outside. What I think I'm going to do is turn my phone to silent, first of all, which I should have done before I started. There we go. And I think we're going back out of here. And rather than do the canopies again, just for speed, I'm going to walk around this side and show you from the pontoon. But there is some very decent side decks and some quite neat features like you can open these and you've got bins for fenders or ropes. And the same there. You know, this is usually dead space, but they've used it on this. Decent cleats about the place as well. So you've got cleats here, cleats here. There's another cleat, in fact, inside here. You can see the fair lead for it. So really good for being able to tie the boat up properly. Some nice teak laid side decks and some teak handrails in the top, which look rather nice. And I like the fact these are just gently bulwarked as well all the way around, just makes it feel really secure. And the anchor on this one, well, that's actually, rather than hanging over the top, it's pushed through the bow under the little cradle. That works rather well. You can see, in fact, there's another Marex on the inside and a rather nice Porsche convertible, 911. Lovely. We've got a, a tour on that one on the channel. It's not the actual boat, but one the same as that. And there's a 310, a smaller Marex, just in there. This is Wessex Marines sales dock, so they've, they're actually the dealers for these. There's that Porsche again. Oh, yes. Nice car. I've got a bit of a funny look then. <laughs> Never mind. What haven't we done? We haven't done engines. Let's go look at the engine. You can't beat the sound of an air-cooled Porsche. Although, actually, that isn't one, is it? They're water-cooled now. Never mind. Let's lift that. And I think we can get in the engines from here.
Look how well that's engineered. Okay, steps down. And in here, we have got a pair of Volvo Penta D4 320 engines. I think there's more of this that you can lift. In fact, I'm sure there is because I can see the gas strut for it over there. But this is great just to get a bit of access to do your daily checks where you go out without having to uproot your, anybody sat in the cockpit, for example. Now, these are giving the boat about 35 knots and she's got a range of about 200 miles. I've got a feeling there's a single engine version of this as well. So if you want a bit more economy and lower running costs, you can have it. But I think at this sort of size, twin engines, I mean, it's a serious offshore boat. I think having twin engines probably works pretty well. But look, even with twins, you can get right round to everything, get to all the mechanical bits and pieces. There's fire extinguishing systems. There's fuel, filters, where you can reach them. All very nice, isn't it? All very well wired. And nicely lit too. Brilliant. I think we've covered it. Let's hop back up here. You see now the sun's come out now. Welcome to the UK. So, what are we going to do? I'll show you what we're going to do. Open the roof again. How brilliant is that? And of course these will slide away. I won't do it right now, but nonetheless, I'm going to open this one as well. And then I'm going to sit at the helm in this lovely, comfortable helm seat and say that is a Marix 375. Very lovely boat. I hope you enjoyed that tour and that practical demonstration of the all weather capabilities. Huge thanks to Wessex Marine, the dealers for these in the UK. I'll put their details in the description. So if you've got any questions, you can give them a shout. And huge thanks as ever to you guys for watching. If you've not subscribed, do hit that little button and hit the little bell because it'll help the channel and it will help you guys know every time a new video is uploaded. And we look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.